So I just did a math. $350 half an hour is $700 one hour. $700 one hour, assuming you work eight hours a day, is about 1.5 mind blowing million dollars a year. Divide that into 12 months, that is about $125,000 a month. That is ridiculous. When I got here, I only had $200 in my pocket. I had no clue that in this country, the opportunity is so great that people can make a lot of money. Well, let's do a little bit of correction. Do I make $125,000 a month? Nope, not yet, not yet, but I'm getting there. Because I don't have consistent $350 coming in every half an hour just yet. Again, it's the mindset. And how much of that $350 actually I kept it in my pocket? Stay tuned. I'll let you know. I'll let you know what it takes to make $350 in half an hour and how much of it are you able to keep it in your pocket. All right, let's get started. If you like a content like this, like, share, and subscribe. And this is the video where I teach about simply leveraging your existing networks. And I'll let you know what led to it. So if you think about it, look at the biggest companies out there. Look at the Amazons, right? What do they do? They connect people one to another and make their money and they make more money than producing than those people that sell actually on the platform. Look at any other hubs, right? Look at Uber that connects drivers with the customers, makes a little bit of percentage from the connection, doesn't drive, doesn't maintain vehicles and etc. but still makes more than a single or all of those drivers that work for Uber combined. So that's exactly what we need to learn. One of the things that I did not know, and I would like you to know if, if you haven't discovered it yet, but if you did, let me know what led you to discover it and how us, the rest of the immigrants can take advantage of your secret. But one of the things that I've learned come to discover that being that connector, the centerpiece is more profitable than actually executing the job here and keeping all the money for yourself. Because the goal is your connector, you keep a little bit here, 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 a little bit from this, a little bit from this, and all of them combined because collectively, individually, each one of them will make more profit than you from that particular connection that you made. But because you make so many connections, you make more money in the end than all of these individual service providers combined and you get the thank you. And let me tell you what had happened and how I made this money. So Nicole, one of my amazing customers who I met through a networking event via Chamber of Commerce. If you have not yet joined a Chamber of Commerce, then I suggest you join your local Chamber of Commerce because they are inexpensive relatively and they are a good place to meet people. And one of the things with Chamber of Commerce is become friends with the CEOs and presidents and ask them for introductions because what you'd want is they, they have so many businesses and they will not and forget to introduce you to businesses. But if you just stay top of their mind and keep asking for connections, eventually you will start getting those connections. And this is where you start growing your network. It's all about networking, who you know and who knows what you do. So consistently, when you meet people, you keep telling them what you do. So people buy from people, momentum, and stories. If you are a famous person, they'll buy from you, right? If a COVID happens and everybody goes and starts buying a toilet paper, suddenly, um, go figure, and or people buy from stories. So they need to hear your story. They need to remember who you are and they need to know what you do. So learn how to tell your story. And if you want a separate video about how to work on your storytelling, let me know because Stories from ancient times, we grew up on stories even before we computers exist, even before paper and pen existed, even before we were able to write with stone on the walls. We're telling stories to our children and this is how we receive the information and pass along. So therefore, story listening from stories and memorizing stories is an amazing skill. So if you don't 
know that yet, let me know. I'll put that video together on a separate video. So I kept attending in this particular event, Nicole, one of my amazing customers, now amazing customer, and who is also a recurring customer now, which means I'll be making more profit by solving more of her problems by helping her reached out to me and it happened to be a Sunday. So yes, Sundays are for my family, but sometimes I look at my phone and respond. Had I chose not to, I would have missed that opportunity. And then the opportunity would have gone to someone else. So Nicole reached out to me and she's like, look, I'm flying out. One of my rental properties flooded. Can you go and take care of it? And the, the very first thing that I did, I acknowledged the receipt and I said, I'm working on it. What that made for Nicole is let her know that someone else is now about to deal with her problem so she can take off on the plane and be at peace and she doesn't have to do and look for someone else. Imagine had I not acknowledged it at that time and Nicole is in real estate and she's got plenty of properties that she managed an amazing woman that achieved a lot for, for the portfolios and, and what she has. So otherwise she would have, if I had not acknowledged the receipt of her problem that I'm working on it, then she would have kept calling other cleaning companies. She would have eventually found a solution and the person who solved her problem would become her go-to-go -go person for the next time. So what I did, she hit me up and I sent her back. I'm like, hey, Nicole, I got your request. I'm working on it. I'll let you know. So that gave her a peace of mind and, and check out the connection itself come from the networking event, from me telling stories about what I do and listening to other people, what they do. So you need to know that if you are to become a hub, if you become an Amazon, if you become an Uber, you need to know drivers and you need to know the customers. And if you become an Amazon, you need to know all the suppliers and you need to know all the customers you need to be able to connect. So pay attention to when people talk what they do, how they make money and what they into. So those are the things that for you to keep in mind. So Nicole reached out to me and then she says, can you do the cleaning? Yes. So I reach out immediately to Benny, who's an amazing subcontractor of mine who's been helping me out for years and years now and we've got an exciting really good relationship a very healthy relationship i also know a bunch of other people that can do the service but i know that benny is usually available on a day and time when nicole is requesting as long as the price is right but note when i acknowledge to nicole that i got her request no question about the price right now i am becoming a problem solver and i'm saying nicole go on a flight i'll take care of this so then I reach out to Benny and then I tell Benny, can you take care of this for me? He says, sure, no problem. So I get back to Nicole, let her know, hey, Nicole, we can take care of this. How do we get into your facility to clean it? And remember, if you're an immigrant, you know a lot of people who can do the cleaning or you yourself might be willing to do the cleaning, depending upon the position you're in. Because back in the days when I was doing the service myself, when I started the company, I was doing the work myself if I had time. So now I was able to establish my company and the reason I'm sharing the knowledge and experience that I have so you can get to the point where you can actually spend your weekends with those that matter most and doing what you like most. So I let Benny know, let Nicole know. Nicole says, okay, coordinate with one of her tenants, Alyssa, and I say, okay, no problem, give me her number. And then I do the coordination. Some of us could say, no, go there, do the work. No, you wanna be as accommodating to your customer as you can. So I get the coordination when Benny can meet Alyssa. I put them in touch. Benny goes, takes care of the work. I pay Benny out of $350 that then I charge Nicole. I ended up paying Benny $200 because it has to be worth for his time to go and do the work. And it took him two probably hours plus the driving time, plus the time he carved out from his weekend. So I want to make sure Benny is fairly compensated as well for an urgent jobs. So he goes, does the job. He tells me, dude, I did the job, sends me a couple of photos of the completed job. Then what I do is following my two minute rule, which is Dave Allen's two minute rule about increasing the productivity because as you get busier, 
you will get busier as you get bigger or bigger or busier you get the point so as you get busier the the more you should be able to accomplish and then most of it will come from delegating if you haven't watched my video how i grew my company and claimed back my time to a million dollars plus then go watch that video it'll tell you exactly who i was hiring when so i could get my time and claim it back so anyhow i let benny know benny lets me know he did the job so then i contact following the two minute Dave Allen's rule, which says if a task to, takes two minutes or less, do it now because by procrastinating, you push it back for further and the opportunity might not present itself. So I let Alyssa know who is my amazing bookkeeper that go ahead and build a customer. And that is it. That's all I did. So I took a call from Nicole. I contacted Benny. I contacted Nicole's tenant, Alyssa. Then when Benny finished the work with Alyssa, I let my back end office manager, who's also a superstar, Alyssa, know to invoice Nicole. That is it. So see how easy it is. If you're an immigrant, if you're a minority, if you own a cleaning company, heck, doesn't matter. As long as you know people who are willing to do the job, you just put them in touch. And this is the skill you need to develop. If you already developed, let us know what hints and tips that you have, how you can meet more people, how you can tell your story and how you can optimize your hours because that's important for all of us, the immigrants, knowing that would really, really help. So, got the money. Um, before, had I done the work myself, I would have gotten the $350 myself. But in this case, I decided to pay, so everybody's fairly compensated. Then. I got, I also invited Nicole out kindly for a lunch. So I get to know more about her challenges. And whenever you're sitting face to face with a customer, you, you get to find out more of their challenges so you can figure out how to solve the challenges. Also at the same time, you're interviewing the client. So don't let, it's not only one way client, not only interviewing you, you're interviewing the client because there could be someone in your network that you might be able to put in chat with this customer and help this customer advance, make more money, make their life easier. It doesn't matter. Solve their problems. The more problems you solve for a customer, the more loyal they'll be and the more they will spread the word, which in the end will come back to you because you are the hub, you are the problem solver. And by being an immigrant, you know so many people. So don't let that go. Well, there you go. There you have it. 200 bucks. To Benny, 150 to me. I could have charged more, but I decided to stay at a reasonable price. Cleaning is an amazing business. If you have not watched my video, how to go and get the cleaning company started from scratch, then go watch it. I can't wait to see you there. Thanks. Bye-bye.